Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day. I want to continue uh, what I started with you yesterday uh, about the, uh, the Great Commission. Of course, uh, we know that Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all the nations. Uh, how do we do that uh, right here where we are? How do we bloom where uh, Jesus has planted us? If we think about uh, 21st century Canada, uh, we need to admit that we live in a secular society. I knew it. Perhaps I was not willing to admit it, but uh, it is true. Uh, but I think it uh, became a whole lot clearer that uh, Canada is a secular place when I uh, read the following statistic. Uh, it made it settle in for me. David Gutersky of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada recently said that only 20% of Canadians attend church at least once a month. Now I want you to let that number sink in for a moment. I did some quick math. Uh, in our province, if you do uh, some, of the, uh, uh, some of the math uh, on any given Sunday, there's about 35,000 people uh, in a worship service in the entire province on one Sunday. That's just a few more than uh, we're vaccinated for COVID-19 this week. Uh, that sort of gives us some perspective, doesn't it? So the second question that was asked as uh, part of that, that article of uh, what are our opportunities as people who live in uh, 21st century society, as people who live in Canada right now, uh, the question being how does the church navigate in this secular society without giving into it or disappearing from it or being mean towards it. See, the last thing we'd want to do is poke at it with a stick. But you see, uh, they also formed it in the, with a sub part to the question too. In a culture that's uh, sometimes hostile towards us, how will we suffer well? How will we make our way through uh, this secular society? Well, I've got a thought for us here. I'm going to take a shot at it. I think a big part of the answer is together. Together, I think, is the answer for us. You see, as we uh, read in Acts chapter 8, uh, there is this a strong contrast that is given. Uh, Stephen has just been uh, stoned by this, uh, this angry mob that are uh, contrary to the message that he was sharing about Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that message that we share as uh, followers of Jesus. Uh, they were so contrary to him that they took him out and they killed him with rocks. There in Acts chapter 8, uh, Stephen is uh, buried and mourned by godly folks. And the contrast is that Saul, who is uh, breathing out uh, his murderous insults, at the people who love Jesus Christ. In the midst of all that contrast, we read in verse 4 that the scattered preached the word wherever they went. You see, they had each other, and they had Jesus, and they preached that, that good news. Jesus hasn't left us, so let's keep telling people about him. Now, before I go, uh, I got an email one time that was titled, So You Think You Know Everything? And uh, it's one of those lists, you know, the, they were perhaps more common in the, the 90s and the early 2000s. But uh, I love those, uh, those emails that uh, trigger your interest and then I give you a list. I know that I don't know everything. I know that nobody knows everything, but uh, there are some pretty neat things on the list. Did you know that a dime has 118 ridges? I didn't. Or about this, uh, a crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Now that could be helpful information, I suppose, uh, if uh, you ever encounter a crocodile. I didn't know that. The other one that uh, caught my attention was that uh, a goldfish has a memory span of about three seconds. Hmm. What was I just talking about? You have a great day. God bless you.